ಉಚ್ಚಾರಣೆ So, this tells me something that you are not reading Bhagavad Gita. All right. Please read Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, please read Bhagavad Gita. A weekly practice, please. Yeah, at least not two, three days, you know, in a couple of days or daily practice. try to open the book and read a verse that to read it it will help you be in bhagavad gita okay the first word in 2.11 is ashochya anvashochya stvam so do not lament yeah that's what he says do not lament shoka do not be do not have shoka 2.12 what does he say first word natve vaham jatu nasam he says there was no time when you were not there neither me which says that we are all eternal souls and individuals 2.13 dehi knows me yatha dehi the soul is moving transferring from one body to another body perfect yes so there is a dehi and there is deha so that there is a soul which moves into different stages in a body and also different bodies after death 14 oh, 14 i just remember that uh, matru tro yes good yes. matra sparshastu that's the first word that these bodily pleasures and pains are only matra sparshastu they are only sensory perceptions okay they do not have a real meaning they are only what they are only sensory perceptions okay what has to be done for that sensory perceptions tam stitik shasva bharata so you have to tolerate them so that is 14 what was number 15 first word last time we discussed this is put my curtains a little down yes anyone yam hina vyathayante te what does that mean yam hina vyathayante te what is vyathayante te distressing distressing yam hina what does that mean yam hina one who is distressing yes so one who is distressing does not elevate but the one who is sukha dukha sukham sukha dukha sukham dhiram so what is the word sama dukha sukham dhiram so in both tuk sukha and dukha one who is dhira can get elevated for liberation so every verse is different so if you just remember the first word you will be able to understand what does that verse mean what is krishna trying to say be in bhagavad gita be on the chariot don't come off the chariot try to be in the chariot every day ek bar rath pe ja ke aao roz to bhagavad gita ke andar rahoge nahi to kya rath se utar gaye na hum log wo chale jayenge wo log अर्जुन और कृष्ण है कि नहीं फिर हम लोग वापस ढूंढते रहते हैं वो कहा थे कहा थे फिर जाके फिर बैठना पड़ता है इसलिए रोज एक बार जाके उनके साथ बैठना है सो दैट यू आर इन भगवत गीता अदरवाइज यू विल लूज द होल कॉन्टेक्स्ट एवरी टाइम वी विल बी जस्ट 
going back and forth, understanding the context. Be in Bhagavad Gita every day, every day. Yes. If not every day, then two days, every once and two days, at least two days. Otherwise, you'll keep losing the track. All right. So 2.15 and 14. Have you understand? Have you understood the 14 and 15 very you know crystal clear to you? 14 and 15, both the verses. So we can move on 16 and 17. They're a little more deeper. Yes. So have you understood the difference between a soul and a body? What does the body how does the body function? How does the body function? What does what is that that makes the body function? Anyone? Anyone? Consciousness. Consciousness. Very good. So how does it how does the consciousness run? How does it flow through the body? Through the five uh, energies of the soul? No, no, no. No, about, no, they are vayu, different. No, that's not how the consciousness flow. They, they are the vayu. How does the consciousness flow through the body? Of course, vayu helps it, but that's not how the consciousness flow. Consciousness flows through the blood that's there in the purports. If you read, you will find out. So when a body dies, the body turns pale. The blood turns white, they say, right? It goes pale. So, and you cannot put some color into the blood and make the person alive. Yeah, it is the natural color which you get. Like the natural color is there for all the entities in this world. Yes, like the plants have a natural color. Yeah, flowers have a natural color. You don't paint them, you don't put any color in them. That is natural. How this is coming from? That is consciousness. Okay, a little deeper to understand all these things, but read, you will understand what it is. So the blood actually carries the consciousness. Okay. So if we are conscious and where is, what is the source of consciousness? What is the source of consciousness? Where does the consciousness come from? Soul. 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 soul Prabhu. The consciousness comes from the soul. Okay. So when we say there is samadukha sukham dhiram, and Krishna says that, that there is Sukha and Dukha. So whose experience is Sukha Dukha? Whose experience is pain pleasure? The mind. Okay. No. Wrong answer. Anyone else? Body. Soul. Name. Body. Okay. Okay. Body is experiencing the... So if the soul goes out of the body, this that means the body is still experiencing pain and pleasure? So the no. matter, so the matter, say this is matter, say we have wood, does it explain experience pain and pleasure? No. So is the body experiencing pain and pleasure? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yeah. no. As per Very good. Context. Very good. Who is experiencing pain and pleasure? The association with so, the body. The association between the body. Association, association? of the soul with hmm. the material body. Association of the soul with the material body. Okay. That is the cause. Yeah, partially, yes. Because the soul when in come comes in contact with the with the with the material body, it starts experiencing pain and pleasure. Is it what you're saying? Yeah. But what is the nature of the soul? Satchitananda. Satchitananda. Very good. What does that mean? Means eternal uh, bliss. Uh, it's in bliss uh, always. In bliss, so it yes. can't be distress, it can't have pain, right? So who's experiencing pain and pleasure? If the soul is always in bliss, it's, it's, a, it's a nature, and body cannot. So who's experiencing pain and pleasure? Yeah. 
माइंड लाइक आराधना माता जी सॉरी ओके सम व्हाट बट आई एम लुकिंग फॉर अ करेक्ट आंसर यू आर पार्शियली करेक्ट ऋषि सेइंग दैट व्हेन इट कम्स इन कांटेक्ट विद द बॉडी इट स्टार्ट्स एक्सपीरियंसिंग दैट बट हु इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग इट अगेन द क्वेश्चन कम्स इन राइट सो देयर इज एन एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ इज इट व्हाट ऋषि प्रभु सेड व्हाट हां जी प्रभु लाइक व्हेन सो एस व्हेन सोल फील्स एसोसिएटेड विद द बॉडी करेक्ट So, it, so the soul when it comes in contact here. with the body there is an mm. experience of pain and pleasure correct but yes. who experiences it this question again remains right subtle mind yeah. it is ha sat yeah probably okay but not, not the soul obviously but the soul identification which is well, i'm not getting the right word sorry so when the soul come in contact comes in contact with the body there is mm. matra sparshastu that's what 2.14 says that there is sensory perception what is perception we discuss this what is perception what is the sensory perception in in practical time, terms Prabhu, when senses see the things, they perceive the things which is not real. What is perceiving? It's their perception, but that's yeah. What is perception? A uh, perceiving is judging something. I mean, experiencing and judging something, but it's ego. not real. Judging, judging are two different things. Okay, what is perception? Is it ego? Um, no, 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 no. Don't go there. Perceiving. No, um, Prabhu, when we perceive something because of our limited. Um, Understanding and knowledge. So, what and is perceive that this is this? What is perceive? Kalpesh, what is perceive? Sushma, what is perceive? Sushma, what is perceive? Or Abhijit, would you want to try? Understanding, understanding how we will take that particular thing like how we will receive it there is a simple word imagination khayali pulao interpret prabhu khayali pulao imagine interpret also like imagination imagination ka meaning kya hai hindi mein khayali pulao correct khayal wo to mera word hai prabhu ji aapko kaise pata so imagination means that you are just virtually thinking that it is correct it is not real that is imagination sensory perception is that so when the soul comes in contact with the body and when there is sukha and dukha it imagines that there is pleasure and pain and desire so is it interpreting whenever... the Imagine. No, let me finish, please. One second. One second. Mm. So, when the soul Sorry. comes in con contact with the body, it imagines that it is experiencing mm. pain and pleasure, but always desires for pleasure. Okay. So, always desiring for pleasure, and whenever they does they does not get pleasure, it experiences pain. So, it imagines. It is always imagining. that's why it is called matra sparshastu otherwise the nature of the soul is satchidanand it's always in bliss contamination with the body coming in contact with the material body with the material nature makes it imagine makes it matra sparshastu okay what is 2.15 saying what is 2.15 saying यम हिना व्यथयंतीयते पुरुषम पुरुषर्षभ समदुख सुखम धीरम सोमरतत्वाय कल्पते सोमरतत्व अमृतत्व सोमरतत्व मींस अल्टीमेट डेस्टिनेशन एलिजिबिलिटी टू अल्टीमेट डेस्टिनेशन इज ओनली व्हेन यू आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज ओनली मात्रा स्पर्शास्तु so when someone is experiencing that 
sensory perception, imagination, experiencing pain and pleasure, he should tolerate. And how will you tolerate pain? So what is pain? So when someone says some upsetting words, it's called you have painful experience. When someone, when there is a, a, a financial loss, when someone says something ill, when there is a, a relationship crisis, you experience pain. So how will you handle that pain? Uh, sometimes we will divert ourselves. Okay. Okay. What is the prerequisite of handling that pain? The prerequisite of handling any pain, painful experience, is handling pleasure. If you are able to handle pleasure, you will be able to handle pain. So, what is the meaning of handling pleasure? Being sober in pleasure. So when there are good times, you remain the same. So you will remain the same when there are painful times. That means not getting over excited when there is pleasure. You will not be over excited when there is Does it make sense? It's very nice, probably. Super. So try, apply this in your life. What do we do when we are very happy? Party. Correct? Yeah. Chances are that we may, our mind may take us down. Yes. What is the nature of a mind? The nature of a mind is like water. It takes you down. It doesn't uplift your consciousness. Only if it is in the right service, in the right state, under the influence of mantra, then the mind is uplifting. Otherwise, it will always take you down. So when there is a very nice um you know opportunity or a pleasure giving uh, event what happens generally the mind takes you down and if you can manage that if you don't get too excited if you are able to manage that excitement and are able to be dhira at that time remain sober at that time what happens you are able to do the same thing when there is a painful situation Okay, so dhira means not to getting not getting excited over pleasure pleasureful circumstances and not getting too much or not lamenting too much or not grieving too much when there are painful situations. That's called dhira. That person who is able to manage both and remain same is eligible for liberation. That is 2.15. Now we will go to next verse 2.16. Okay. <clears throat> so please repeat after me. 2.16. Nasate vidyate bhavo. Nabhavo vidyate sataha. Nabhavo vidyate sataha. Ubayo, happy, happy stone tas. Ubayo, ubayo, ubayo,
नाभावो विद्यते सतः those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the existence the material body there is no endurance and of the eternal the soul there is no change this they have concluded by studying the nature of both can someone else read it as well a little slower please can someone try as well? those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non existent the material body there is no endurance and of the eternal the soul there is no change this they have concluded by studying the nature of both okay can someone else try as well okay i'll, I'll... Yeah. those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non existent the material body there is no endurance and of the eternal the soul there is no change this the seers have concluded by studying the nature of god aditi do you want to read the translation as well okay maybe sushma you can try okay same is they both are not able okay what is endurance ability to repeat an action mm -hmm. for a longer period of time Okay. Anyone else? To exist in its natural state for the longest period of time. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? You understanding the meaning? Everyone is under seven years of age. Yeah. Which stays for long, stays for long, long lasting. Long lasting. Never long, long, long lasting. Okay. Anyone else understand the meaning of endurance, Kalpesh? What is endurance? What is endurance? In simple words. Simple words. Long lasting. Okay. Okay. Endurance is like being constant. Okay. So, in simple terms, if you want to understand the capacity, you know, of something to last or to withstand wear and tear, something which does not wear and tear is called endurance. Is is called the property of that thing which withstands wear and tear that property is called endurance and that's the meaning of the word bhava in this verse bhava endurance nasato sat and asat there are two words here so na asat what is asat 
प्रभु लाए विच इज नॉट ट्रू इज असत सत इज ट्रू असत इज लाए आई थिंक सो एनीवन एल्स Asat is fake. Asat is fake. Okay. Sat is real. Okay. All right. Anyone else to try? Asat. Asat is which doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Okay. And Sat also. Did you ask or only Asat? Yeah. Okay. Asat. Yeah. Doesn't exist. Okay. Anyone? Abhijit, you want to try? Asad. I agree to Rishi. Doesn't exist. Uh, we feel that it is there, but it doesn't exist at all. So there are two meanings for this one. Which one? We will see the context of the words. The so two meanings. Asat is one is non-existent, and other one is non-eternal. Okay, we'll try to understand this on to from the words. So asat. Asat. So there is a verse from Upanishad. We would like to, uh, you know, we can recite that one too. You might have heard this verse. It's called the Shanti Shloka. So you can repeat after me. Asato ma sadgamaya. Asato ma sadgamaya. Tamaso ma jyotirgamaya. Tamaso ma jyotirgamaya. सो वॉट इज दैट मीन टेक मी फ्रॉम असत टू सत असतो मा सत गमय फ्रॉम फ्रॉम असत sat then the next is tamasoma jyotirgamaya from darkness take me to the light darkness doesn't mean the physical you know switch on the light or no it means from ignorance take me to goodness take me to higher consciousness from the nature of ignorance to higher consciousness then third intelligence is tamasoma right? yeah take me so, from from yeah from ignorance to intelligence to uh, the light the light of knowledge yes and the third one is mrutyoma amrut from the non eternal to take me to eternity so you see here the difference is that from non existent to take me to the existent so this is also the meaning here the same context that asata refers to the non existent now non existent does not mean literally non existing non existent means that it's it is it is what non permanent very good very good so it is non permanent so when we say this maya this material world is non existent doesn't mean that you know wall which is here it is non existent you can't you know bang into the wall and say that it's non existent it does exist but it may not be there forever it's non permanent so this material world is like that so asato ma so sorry na sato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate sada now if you see the poetic way the way this verse is said is in english it is called kayasmas have you heard about it kayasmas it's figures of speech grammar the figures of speech kayasmas means when you say the first word first sentence and the sex sent second sentence is the is actually the repetition but a 
it is um, what they call second part is the inversion not that it's a yeah, repetition yeah. but Re -re 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 yeah. So, like, you know, the famous statement from John F. Kennedy, he says, not ask, ask not what the nation has done for you, ask what the nation, what you have done for the nation. So when you see, see this is the way this has been said, you know, so this is chiasmus, figures of speech. So Krishna says, na sato vidyate bhavo, na bhavo vidyate sataha. So the second one is the inversion, but it makes more sense. It brings in the sense of the first one. So what is Krishna saying here? Of the non-existent, there is what? Of the non-existent, there is no endurance. And of the eternal, there is no change. So if it was to be said, this is eternity, you know, not existence, it will not make sense. That is that of the non eternal there is no uh, endurance and of the uh, eternal there is endurance so it doesn't make more sense but when we change it to non-existent it will make complete sense that of the non-existent because it is non-permanent it is not going so non-exist non-existent means it is there but it is not going to be there forever. So when we say matter, when we talk about matter, what happens to matter? Matter doesn't vanish. It transforms into something else. So when there is matter, any matter, it changes from one state to the other, which means it is non-permanent. So when the body, when we look at the body, it is not going to be like that forever. It changes. So it is not permanent. It changes. Okay. So it cannot bear the wear and tear and it dies. That is called it cannot handle the. So it is not. It's non-endurance. There is no endurance for the body. And there is no change for the soul. This they have concluded. Who? The seers of truth. So he says. Ubayor api drishtontas. What is drishto? Drishta, drishtanta. This word comes from drishtontas. It's coming from the word drishtanta. Drishtanta means drishti and anta. So the end of the vision or the conclusion. Okay. Yes. Does it make sense? Okay. So the conclusion has come from whom? Tvanayos tat. Tattva darshi bihi. Tattva darshi. Tattva darshi means the ones who can, who are searching for the truth, who want to see the truth. Tattva darshi bihi. Tattva. So tattva means, tattva means the root, the actual. Tattva. Okay. So they want to see the actual thing. So when when we talk about you know any problem, we try to find out where it is arising from. What is the root cause? What is the tattva of this? That is called tattva. When you try to find the real thing behind it. So you maybe see a lot of uh, noise around the issues, but you try to find the real thing. That is called tattva. So tattva darshipi, the one who are the seers of the truth, they have found it. It just at me. Krishna says that you may not consider me as an authority to say that, but the ones who have actually gone and applied this, those they have found that, that for the matter there is no endurance and for the soul there is no change so the soul remains the same forever okay that is the understanding so 2.16 what is what, what is the worst meaning the crux of it Making it different from 2.15. What was 2.15? Yes. We just discussed 2.15, right? What is 2.15 saying? 
through 415 says that uh, uh, it's hard to explain. I have understood, but it's hard to explain. No Those who can rise about uh, the happiness, feeling of happiness and distress. Those are the people who can rise above everything. Okay. I mean, they are I eligible for liberation. Eligible for liberation. Now, those people who are eligible for liberation, those people, what, what is the connection between 15 and 16? Those people only can understand the uh, real existing and non-existent uh, or eternal and non-eternal things correct so further to that he explains that the ones who are seers of truth who want to on the search of the truth so first is eligible the eligibility now first is eligibility of getting liberated but after you are eligible and if someone is going on the path of searching for the real truth tattva darshibhi those people who have gone ahead on that path they have understood that there is there are two natures there are two natures what are this asat and sat okay of the asat there is no Yes, there is no endurance and of the sat there is no change okay this is the understanding now moving forward on to 2.17 which will be a little more deeper have you understood 2.16 nicely yes Kalpesh. Probably am I the only one going all the bouncers at the moment, or is it everyone? no? Even this this summary I did not to get. Okay. The crux of what it. did you did not what did you not understand? Have you understood two point fifteen? Yep. No. Ah, good. So you have understood Rishi two point fifteen. Two point fifteen. Yes. Okay. Have, have everyone understood two point fifteen? Can someone explain Kalpesh 2.15? So he understands if you have understood. I'll go and mute. Be quick. Got only 15 20 minutes more. We have to do 2.17 also. I understood 2.15. It talks about the eligibility for the liberation uh, i get that part um, that if you are uh, if you are still in in any of the situations then you know uh, you are basically you know moving towards liberation mm -hmm. i i get that part 2.15 okay. 2.16 mm -hmm. i didn't get anything okay. So these are the people who are actually liberated. So who have seen the truth. So the people who are self-realized, who have gone ahead on the path of self-realization, they have hmm. identified two natures. One is Asat and one is Sat. Okay. So they have found two different entities. That is the matter and the soul. So of the matter, there is no endurance. It is non ex sorry, non existent, yes. And it changes. Or non permanent. Yeah, correct. And it changes. And of the sat, he says that it does not change. There is okay. no change in that. It always remains the same. So are they, are they trying to say that Sat is soul? Yes. Ah, I get it now. Okay, I get it now. Uh, Sat Prabhu? is soul. Anil yeah. Prabhu ji? Yeah. yeah. Yes. 
प्रभु दिस इज श्लोका 4.24 आई थिंक 4.43 इट सेज तद विधि प्रणिपाते इन परिप्रश्न इन सेविया उपदेशिते ज्ञानम ज्ञानी नस्तत्व दर्शन सो दैट श्लोका इज इन कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ द गुरु लाइक तत्व दर्शी भी यस हु हैज सीन द ट्रुथ या करेक्ट लाइक तद विधि प्रणिपाते इफ वी अप्रोच द स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर इन सबमिसिव एटीट्यूड तो दे आर द वंस हु हैव सीन द ट्रुथ एंड दे कैन मेक अस to realize Correct. that Correct. so is it the same thing prabhu we are talking like they are the ones who are the seers of truth you tell me yes prabhu like i i feel that with the gurus are the one like shila prabhu pad and um, like their his followers all maharaj they they are the ones whom we should submissively ask questions because and this prove for us you also <laughs> like yeah So I feel they are the ones who have seen the truth, and they we can help. They can help us know the truth. So they are the seers of truth for us. So how do you find a spiritual master? How do you say that this spiritual master has seen the truth? Because they are stable, they are still in happiness and distress. That's a prerequisite, right? To elevate. Mm. so they are eligible that is eligibility means abhi um, you know yeah. uh, you are just eligible abhi admission nahi ho gaya so how do you find <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so eligibility is only eligible and they should be in the yes for eligibility i know probably like they should be in the li- the line of um, you know disciples like from narad ji what start like that cyclic succession they should be in that so that is a legitimate again prabhu yes but how do you say that the, the yeah. guru which we are asking he has seen the truth uh-huh. is a tattvadarshi how we can say that mm. yes abhijit sir for so, me abhijit the prabhu. understanding is that anyone who is able to guide me properly if i am doing something wrong and he guides me properly he becomes a guru at that time and a spiritual guru will be the one who guides me to actually uh follow the path of uh, liberation uh, i can't categorize that okay shri uh, shri la prabhu pad uh, he is a liberated person or uh, he is at a different level altogether how do you know that, that? by by all the readings or uh, all the past times you, which i have gone so you convince with the reading you completely uh, convinced not definitely means yeah. i cannot say that's why i'm saying that i cannot say that i cannot categorize like aradhana mata ji has said that shrila prabhu pad or uh, she said about you also i cannot say that very good. I, very good because very nice. i think so the for now for now in today's situation we cannot say who is who has really understood very the nice. concept good and very i can good. only rely upon krishna who is saying right now or very what nice. i am reading right now very nice that's see it's very hard to be real isn't it it's very hard to be real trust yeah. me i'm blunt andar se nikalta hai andar se nikalna chahiye when you are opening up when you talk like that with reality with facts you know with your real thing then you start understanding bhagavad gita ye to kitab hai patharon mein aise hi padh ke bhul jaoge ise tum and in my opinion everybody is reading and understanding a different part correct means it is like uh, six blind men uh, looking at a elephant sort of no no <laughs> see the main thing is that are we applying what we are reading most important thing are Correct. we applying what we are reading now when we look at 2.14 when we look at 2.12 we look at 2.13 are we applying those verses in our life are we trying to understand those verses are we serious about it are we really looking for understanding bhagavad gita or are we looking for you know some kind of a uh, interaction I will, I will sir i applied it uh, in my audit ha huh? sorry what i have applied it in my audit 
very nice to be tolerant very to be nice. tolerant you know nice. because there are questions when you are facing an audit mm. there are questions and this time it was a anti bribery management system audit very so nice. even if you are not a uh, a bribe taking person or a corrupt person they ask you such questions that irritate you and mm. you have to be tolerant at that time and prove that yes i have done the right thing mm. so i have applied it by being tolerant over there very nice good good so when we talk about tatva darshi tatva darshi is the guru the spiritual master yes but how can you say that some x y z spiritual master is tatva darshi how can you say Yeah, Prabhuji, so, yes. Sorry, no. Rishi. Yes, Continue. yes, Rishi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can you can say your comment. Yeah. I just thought they will like it talks about here also see uh, when they have seen we will also experience that they are able to explain things that other people don't know. Okay. Explanation is, an, is one thing, okay. But there or is also something called observation also. Observation. You can observe a change okay. in them. Okay. What is what is uh, apart from explanation and observation? Um, a change in yourself because of association with him. Conclusion. Yeah, very nice. That's a good point. Do you see the change in yourself? Very good. By following what someone has said. Yes. Do you find the change? Do you find something happening to you? You getting better? I definitely do. <laughs> so no, I'm just throwing a question. No, yeah, that, but yeah. Uh, yeah. That, do you feel that? Then yes, there is something happening to me. Right. And the the way it, <clears throat> it works, yes. it's very simple. Yeah. It's very simple the way it works. So I understand from my gurus, as I understand, that Krishna, Krishna. He gives you spiritual master. No one else. Remember yeah, this. Krishna is the one who gives you spiritual master. No one else. And are you surrendered to Krishna for getting a spiritual master? Then you will get that spiritual master. Who is a Tattvadarshi. You might get that. It depends on your surrender to Krishna. You really want that from Krishna, that I want a Tattva Darshi Guru. Then you get a Guru. I'm not saying that that you with the Guru which you have is not Tattva Darshi. He may be, but you may not even know. If you have not followed the way to approach Guru. I've seen many people, many people, they write down, they pass tests, and they go and do all those things, and they get ready. I got, I got a guru. You know, that's not just the, it may be one process, yes, but the way to approach guru is through Krishna. Always approach the guru through Krishna. So Krishna gives you guru, always. always. This is, this is, this is the like experienced by so many devotees and so many you know, aspiring souls, always. Yeah. So when you approach a guru with surrendering to Krishna, then you get a, you get an experience, you get the knowledge, you get the understanding to find out, yes, this guru is a Tattva Darshi and I may, be, I'm changing. I am getting inclined more towards Krishna. So what is the per, what is what is the job of a guru? What does a guru do? To give you Krishna. Very nice. So guru actually helps take out all the obstacles between you and Krishna. That is the job of guru. So when you feel that yes, I am getting closer more and more to Krishna. But if you feel that I'm getting more closer to Maya and I'm getting more closer to all the other nonsense things in this world, then you should think about talking to your Guru. Why is it happening that? Okay. 
so there are gurus in this world who may fulfill your material desires also people choose the gurus based on that also that their material desires are fulfilled and they go for that guru but that is not the purpose of guru guru's purpose is to get take you closer to krishna not closer to maya remember if you get rich after meeting a guru and you think that is the right guru for me then you are mistaken that's not a spiritual master maybe some other guru okay it may be a business guru for you but not spiritual master spiritual master will make sure you get closer to krishna okay so that is tattva darshi understood this verse 2.16 prabhu what is the why is this verse there what, what i mean some of these concepts we've already discussed in some past verses also mm-hmm. about the material nature of yeah. you know when we speak something when we say something that there is this soul and then there is matter okay krishna has been explaining this there is something called as a reference and also something called as um authorization also called as whether that has been time tested anything what i'm saying has been time tested whether something what i'm saying is actually there so krishna is just trying to authenticate his statement in this verse saying that there are seers of the truth who have actually found this that there is soul and then there is matter so he is authenticating his own statement that this is not just a theory this is practically implemented so this is a vigyana not just gyan perfect perfect you answered my second question also because and i was about to ask that if krishna is the supreme personality of god at why does he need to refer to seers mm. yeah. <laughs> so that answers that yeah practical implementation is very important so this this is this is a very important verse in that aspect also that when we are reading we also have to think that someone has already realized this it's not just you know statement someone has realized it and if we surrender to krishna he might get us connected to these souls who are self realized who are tatvadarshi it's very hard to find a self realized person or a soul trust me nobody will be able to help you with that except krishna and you may experience self realized souls if you are surrendered to krishna and that experience will change your life will change your life okay we should have that kind of a desire <laughs> we should have that desire ah uh, prabhu ji yeah uh, prabhu can can i be just on listening now i'm just cooking some prasadam now sure, sure, for sure. the evening program yes but i'll be listening prabhu i'll continue okay, listening okay. thank you hari krishna hari hari krishna hari krishna so this is this is the desire someone should have that i want to be you know in association with such a pure devotee association with a pure devotee that is association yeah dancing sir, or having sir, party with you... devotees is not association <laughs> association is association with pure devotees is association yeah yeah yes yes abhi ji sir i was saying can we continue this uh, after 2.17 so we can do the 2.17 and we can continue our discussion again regarding guru there may yeah, be yeah. more yeah we we can we can take that uh, separate uh, topic sometime yeah. how to how to approach a guru how to yeah. we can do that yeah so we'll read 2.17 now please repeat after me is aditi and sushma still there they are still connected i can see them yes yes i am here okay all right please repeat after me 2.17 yes Aminashi i am there to tadviddhi 
अविनाशी तु तत्विति अविनाशी तु तद्विधि अविनाशी तु तद्विधि अविनाशी Can someone read the translation? This time, Aditi, you want to try? Yeah, uh, that which pervades the entire body, you should know, you sh should know to be indestructible. No one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. That which pervades the entire body, you should know to be indestructible. No one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. So, what pervades the entire body? Kalpesh, what pervades the entire body? What pervades the entire body? Yes. What is Senses. the meaning of pervade? Senses. What is the meaning of pervade? Uh, like, you know, you perceive something. Okay. Is perception and pervade the same? Uh, no. Okay, so what I, is pervade? What is pervade? Spread through the body. Very good. Yes. Spread in the body. Reaching spreading, every part. Spreading through the body. It is blood. Very good. Blood yes. is spread through the and body. And soul, Prabhu, be present. Like soul is present in the is body. Is it soul it probably... which is spreading through the body? No, soul is just... Consciousness, Prabhu, sorry. Consciousness. Ah, good, good. Now we are talking. <laughs> good, good, good. So specifics are very important, you know, when we talk, when we say exactly... Where does the soul reside? In the heart, near the heart area. In the and heart. Yeah. In the heart. And where does consci consciousness reside? All over the body. All over the body. So right. that which pervades the entire body. What is that which pervades the entire body? It is? Consciousness. 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 Always remember. Thing that spreads throughout the body is consciousness. And the limit of that consciousness is only this body. It cannot go into another body. That is the limitation of this consciousness. So you cannot know what the other people is feeling, other, other person is feeling. You can only feel what your body is feeling because of that consciousness in your body. All right. Okay. And it actually goes through the blood. So that's how the consciousness is spread across the blood. And Krishna says that no one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. So 
neither that soul can be destroyed, neither the consciousness can be destroyed. It's always there within the soul. And it spreads through the entire body. Okay. So you talk about consciousness. There are different states of course. Understood what is consciousness now very clearly? Yes. Yes, everyone. Everyone clear what is consciousness? Or anyone has doubts? Questions? Understood what is con consciousness? Silence is yes? No question. Yes, Rishi. So we are saying uh, the consciousness is, uh, is pervades the entire body and soul is in the heart, but the consciousness is emanating from the soul. Correct. Okay. Yes. Just like the rays are coming out of the sun. 